This program is brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. When I fall, I shall arise. You're never going to be able to defeat the church of Jesus Christ because in the middle of the darkness, there's always going to be some light and light will arise and it'll shine and the glory of the Lord will appear. You're never going to extinguish this light. Change Experience 2023 has officially kicked off. Join Creflo Dollar in Houston, February 23rd and 24th. Make your Psalm 91 confessions in person. Experience uplifting worship and change your life with the message of grace. Get ready for a revival like none other. Seating is limited. Register for free now. Text CHANGE2023 to 51555 or log on to ministries.org. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, your love is here to stay. Oh, it's time we live a new life. Let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. We're going to deal with the spirit of fear uh, because I just don't think people are seeing, they're just not seeing what's happening right now. It's happening right in front of your face. And the Bible talks about how the Antichrist, the person the Antichrist will show up one day and he, he'll deceive so many people. And, and I see how that's happening right now. And I'm talking about the deception that Satan is throwing on people where fear is concerned. Our world is inundated with a bunch of people. Just all the stuff you hear about the shootings and people that are doing, those people are full of fear. Fear is, is a foundation by which darkness is released. And darkness tries to make suggestions and control your mind. and People are doing things, and then after they do it, they don't even understand what they did, why they did what they did. There are things going on with, with church people. Not recognizing what, what, the, what pandemic has done. And so when the pandemic came and the churches all closed down, the, nobody got the significance of what just happened. A voice of unity was disrupted. A sound that could be produced only when we would come together was taken away. And then thank God for the technology that we use, and people could still get involved in church and do some things. Let me read you this prophetic word by the, the prophet Isaiah. And you look at it with me. I'm, I'm still trying to articulate what I'm, a, what I'm about to teach you, and I mean, I get to it, but I trust God. I trust God that you and others are going to be delivered. I just don't know. I, I, would just, I would just rather go home and be in heaven than to have my life tormented by fear. And I know some people don't feel that way. There's, there's a solution to fear, but it involves the Word of God. So a lot of people are not interested in that solution because it involves the Word of God. And sometimes we look for other solutions where there are other ways. But honey, there, there's coming a time right now in this life, we, create, we are in such darkness, the only antidote, the only uh, vaccine, since that's a big word now, the only vaccine against darkness is the Word of the living God, the light of God. That's right, and you ain't going to need a booster when you get this. All right, now, now listen to this carefully. Now, here's what, here's what he prophesies. Now, before I read this, the word arise, I thought that was interesting. That word literally means to change your posture or change your position. 
So if I'm in this particular posture, to arise would mean for me to change my posture and position. So what's your posture? What's your posture? The first thing he says here is the answer. He says, arise. Change your posture and position. Now, it's going to show you later that he's talking about arise out of darkness. Change it. In order to get out of darkness, there's got to be a change of posture and position. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. I want to simplify this very, just, just make sure you understand it. The light that, you, every time I say light, I want you to think about the Word of God. In fact, I want to go deeper than that. I want you to think about God. The Bible says God is light. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Verse 2, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Now, he's not talking about nighttime shall cover the earth. Darkness is everything that is in opposition to the light. Darkness is everything that opposes the Word of God. That's the darkness he's talking about. He's talking about a way of thinking that opposes the Word of God, a way of doing that opposes the Word of God, a way of governing that opposes the Word of God, Every, any, anything that stands in opposition to God and His Word is darkness. And he says, the darkness shall cover the earth, the whole earth, not just this country, but darkness shall cover the world. Opposition against God and His Word shall cover the earth. We're there. When's the last time you took a look at the whole world? They hate God. They hate the Bible. There's a constant attack to try to pull people who used to believe in God or who still believe in God away from him. It's worldwide. That's the darkness. Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. It shall cover the earth. Now, remember, there's another prophecy that says that the glory of God shall cover the earth like the waters of the sea. So you got to please understand something. Darkness will not win. But this prophecy will come to pass and has come to pass. The darkness shall cover the earth. Now watch this. And gross darkness, the people. The only way it can cover the earth is got to cover the people. You know what it's like to have a person that's in darkness? He is a person, his way of thinking, his way of doing, his way of living is in total contradiction to the Word of God. Why? It may be because he don't know it. Because when you, when you come against the church so much and you beat it up so bad and you build a, a way of thinking that says, don't need church, don't want church, not interested in church, all church does is ruin people, then what happens is you, you step away from the light that should be a part of church or, or the Bible. So you're not getting any word. You're not getting any understanding of any word. No light. You don't know what the Word says about how you should live, how you should treat people. You don't know what the Word says about how you should think. You, know what, you don't know what the Word says about how you should, could, should conduct yourself. Uh, you, 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 none of that is in, is, is in your life. You don't know it. You're not being trained up. The Bible says train up a child in the way that he should go. That's over. The Bible's an enemy. The light has become the enemy. Now imagine life with no light. The light's the enemy. The Bible says, he says, the sad part about it is that the light will come with the darkness, but people will choose the darkness rather than the light. And people have chosen darkness rather than light. I don't want to hear what the Bible has to say. I don't want to hear about no preacher. And we formed these, these things about the light and, and their lies because they all came from the devil and he can't do nothing but lie. If you wake up in the morning and the devil say, this is going to be a good day, it's a lie. Prepare for the worst day of your life. <laughs> Do you understand? Darkness pumped through television. Darkness pumped through social media. And hey, there's a new type of thing getting ready to come. Where now instead of you reading it, now you can be a part 
of the technology and enter into the darkness and stay there, a type of reality that's a virtual reality, that if you thought the social media caught people's lives, this thing that is about to break open is going to be so demonic that things that are going to happen, you th are you going to think, how did it happen? And it's right before your face. But you don't know no light, so you don't pay no attention to the artificial stuff that's coming up right now. Gross darkness, the people. It even has you as a Christian, you who know God, questioning the things you at one time knew were the truth. And now you even question the things that you knew because society and the norms and values are so big that darkness has convinced you that something's wrong with you. And so now, if you'll notice, everybody uses this phrase, my truth. And when you talk about my truth, it's really your deception, but to feel better about your deception, you call it your truth. There's, and, and then you got everybody's truth, everybody trying to live their own truth, when it's not your truth at all. It's destruction and darkness and deception that you have bought. And you live out your truth and feel better about being so deceived and convinced yourself that this thing your mama said was wrong is now your truth. Gross darkness on the people. Kids going to school sh shooting folks and they got this stare in their eye and you're trying to figure out what's going on with them. And afterwards, you talk to them, they say, I, I don't even know why I did that. Because darkness is now available to guide you, lead you, be your religion, be your God, control you at your will. And you know what leads people to darkness? Fear. Fear. There's some people in darkness that are betting. The church is over with. It's done. It's, it's over. We've destroyed it. And they're applauding. But I got news for you, baby. When I fall, I shall arise. You're never going to be able to defeat the church of Jesus Christ because in the middle of the darkness, there's always going to be some light, and light will arise, and it'll shine, and the glory of the Lord will appear. You're never going to extinguish this light. Darkness everywhere. You feel like the fool for standing for something that the Bible says. You now walk in shame of your relationship with Jesus. You now keep coming up with a thousand excuses to blame God or somebody for your, your situation in life. And the problem with playing the blame game is the blame game just continues to indicate that you still have not accepted responsibility for what you have done. You keep blaming folks. It's a key. Anytime you say something to somebody and they start blaming, oh, the problem is, is you won't accept responsibility for your own actions. Hey, brother, how you doing? Haven't seen you at church in a while. Oh, I don't go to your church no more. Why won't you? Oh, what happened? What happened? Well, such and so, such and so, such and so, do. Yeah, but I didn't do that. Why, why, you, why you stop going to church? Oh, 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 you, you're being governed by darkness. See, because darkness will feed you excuses so it can protect itself. Amen. Do y'all see what's going on? So what happens when at one time you were in the light, but for two years you're not in the light? You don't read the Word no more. You don't listen to sermons no more. You don't make no confessions no more. You don't pray no more. You don't meditate in the Word no more. You ain't got time to listen to no church music. That's what you call it, church music. You boast and brag about 
uh, why you left the church and try to recruit other people over to your darkness as if you should be congratulated. You just was in the wrong church. Don't make every church look like your experience. There's some churches I wouldn't go to, but I'm not going to lead Jesus over, over a bunch of clowns that did what they did at the church. I'm going to find me another place. There's got to be a, 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 a good one somewhere. Darkness, gross darkness, the people. But, now that word but, three letters, awesome. That word but is going to erase everything that was said before it. Darkness shall cover the earth, gross darkness of people. But you can zero all that out because God says, I'm getting ready to change everything that just said. Let's look at the other side of this but. But the Lord shall arise upon you, and his glory shall be seen upon you. I prophesize to your world changes. Get ready. God's getting ready to, to, to change his position on you. God's getting ready to get on you like you ain't had him on you. God's getting ready to get in your household like it ain't been in your household. He's getting ready to get on your mouth like it ain't been on your mouth. He's getting ready to get on your words and give you words like you never had. He's getting ready to reposition himself on you, and the glory of the Lord is going to be seen on you. And you're going to walk into places and people are going to say, what just happened? The atmosphere is going to change because somebody with the glory just walked in that place. Hallelujah! Lord, have mercy, I almost did a two and a half off the stage. <laughs> glory to God. I tell you, darkness is never going to win. I tell you, darkness is never going to be greater than the light. I tell you, the light is getting ready to shine in the middle of all of the darkness and all of the deception and all of the wickedness. The Lord Jesus Christ, which is my light. And he said, and you are the light of the world. I ain't, I'm not going to live my life in fear. And I'm not going to live my life in darkness. And I'll preach this way if just three people left. Because there's always be some light coming out of this dome. Yeah, pass the butt. Get your butt out the way so the light can come in. <laughs> You've trusted God all these years to keep you safe, to deliver you, to take care of you, and you ain't had nothing to say to him since. You've been operating in the fear that has been broadcasted to your attention over the last two and almost two and two and a half years. And some people have not recovered yet, and some of them won't, and some of them are gone. I gotta trust God. I, I gotta trust God. You do whatever you're gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with it. I'm going to stick with him. I'm going to stick with him long enough for this prophecy, prophecy to come to pass. Arise. Shine. Now, arise. Shine. Now, it's going to be some hellacious stuff that's going to take place, but hold on until you hear that command. Arise. Shine. But as long as you're in the light, the darkness won't be able to comprehend. I'm going to stay in the light. I got to be careful about this because I don't want, I'm not preaching no fear to you. I'm just telling you this is going to come to pass. Now watch this, verse 3. And the Gentiles, now in that time, the Gentiles were not a part of the covenant. So they would be a class of sinners. 
and the Gentiles shall come to thy light. Look at that. But you see what he gave me to do? He said, I'm going to have people who are not in the covenant going to come to your light. Look at that. There's a soul winning plan that God's got ready. Since they're not reading the Bible, they bump into your light, your love, your kindness, your consideration. That's why you can't be a hypocrite in these last days because your hypocrisy might drive away something that your light was supposed to draw. And so, yeah, people acting rude at the grocery store, just step aside and say, God bless you, sweetheart. We love you. And the light will draw them. Oh, I'm so sorry. I apologize. Well, do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? I used to. Come on, baby, let's rededicate ourselves to the Lord. The light, the light shall come. And the Gentiles are going to come to your light, your love, your confidence, your joy. All the things that we have as Christians is going to be attractive. Your laughter is going to be attractive. You know, the darkness eventually makes a person miserable, but they don't know what to do. They're not happy, so they have to act like it because social media has taught them how to look like everything okay. Take an Instagram photo. <laughs> and everything look good on Instagram. But if you go behind the camera phone, you see sad, stressed, disgusted, people who've lost their identity and don't know what they're supposed to be doing. But the light's going to come out of you, and it's going to draw the, the Gentiles. And kings will come to the brightness of the rising. There will be people who are in political places of power that will see your light and come to it. Number four, look at this, uh, verse four. He says, so lift up your eyes around about and see. Oh, they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Your son shall come from far and your daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Some of you have children that just don't want to have nothing to do with you. That's going to change. The light of God's glorious gospel going to draw them. You know everybody going to California, so I say California. They're going to draw them from California. They're going to draw them from the East Coast, West Coast, from Italy. They're going to come. Something just going to happen on the inside of them by the Holy Ghost. Verse 5. And watch what else is going to happen. Then you shall see, and you're going to flow together, and your heart shall fear or reverence and be enlarged. Watch what else is going to happen. Because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. That's a prophetic word about the wealth of the wicked. It's going to be transferred into the hands of righteous people. The abundance of the seas shall be converted unto thee, and the forces, look up that word forces, I believe it's translated wealth, and the forces or the wealth of the Gentiles, watch this, shall come unto thee. The Lord spoke to me and he said, start confessing, I believe I've received the wealth of the wicked into my hands right now. Somebody, everybody say that, I believe I receive the wealth of the wicked into my hands right now. It's all throughout the Bible. That's one of the last events that's going to happen. Somebody said, God, I never did that before. You better go read your Bible. Israel is being delivered out of Egypt, being delivered out of slavery, and they're walking out with the wealth of the Egyptians. And one day, God transferred it in their hands. Why do you think Pharaoh came after them? He's trying to get his money back. I'm telling you, look at James chapter 5. He says, there's coming a time where the rich man is going to reap and howl for the miseries that shall come upon him. He says that, that the wicked will gather it up, but the just will put it on. 
I don't believe that. Yeah, because you've been in the darkness where this is concerned. Are you looking for tools to defeat the terror and panic that are in the atmosphere these days? The answers are in Creflo Dollar's seven message series, How to Defeat Fear. God is greater than any fear we could face, and this life-changing series will equip you with godly weapons to eliminate fear from your life. Jesus came to be an example of how to live life in this physical body, and this is how you live life as a Christian in this physical body, depending on God. Your faith is really dependent on God. The just shall live by dependent on God. Now, dependent on God is the substance of things hoped for. Dependent on God is the evidence of things not seen. For we live from dependent on God to dependent on God. Just trust God and watch Him come in and take that fear away from you. Visit CreflodollarMinistries.org and click eStore or call the number on your screen to secure your series today. For a love gift of only 40 U.S. dollars, banish fear today. No matter where you are on your personal journey, the Word of God can reach you. Tune in to World Changers every Sunday at 10 a.m. or restream at 2 p.m., 6 p.m., and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have you ever had God save somebody in your family and you, they, they were no good for nothing dirty, but He saved them anyway, sanctified them, filled them with the Holy Ghost? Text Watch Now to 51555 or visit worldchangers.org for more information about services and stream times. I open my heart, I open my mind, I open myself up to God possibilities, to God happenings, God encounters, whatever He wants to do, however He wants to do it, but I refuse to live in the past. We're in this together. No matter where we are, we are World Changers. See you online. By the grace of God, we feed and clothe people, provide houses, visit hospitals and prisons, and do so, so much more. Every time you make a financial donation to support us, you do these things as well. The tangible relief we provide to God's precious people is only possible because of your faithful support. Thank you for supporting us as we strive to reach a lost and dying world for the Lord Jesus Christ. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to creflodollarministries.org. God bless you. Creflo and Taffy Dollar love connecting with you. And here at World Changers, we understand the importance of using technology to do just that. We're constantly working to bring the gospel of Christ to thousands of viewers and followers around the world, and we want you to get involved. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. We want to make the word of grace available throughout every voice of social media. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. The preceding program was brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.